Hello, Joe here from Infinity of Tacoma. Today I'm gonna to tell you about this beautiful 2013 Tesla Model S P85 Plus. Back in 2013, this was the latest and greatest Tesla product. Um, a little over 400 horsepower, uh, about a 200 to 250 mile range uh, when fully charged. Uh, back in 2013, that was pretty impressive. There's really no other electric car that could really touch the performance. Uh, or anything that the Model S was giving you. And this, the Model S was really the f first Tesla that put uh, Tesla on the map. Uh, the first Tesla product was the uh, Tesla Roadster, the original one, but that was a niche product. It was a small two-seat rotor that was largely based off the Lotus Elan platform, where the Model S was the first uh, ground-up uh, Tesla product, uh, where Elon uh, Musk had a, more of a heavy hand in the development. And people might be surprised, but t uh, Elon didn't, uh, he didn't uh, found Tesla. He wasn't the original founder. Uh, two guys did, I forget their names, and he was uh, one of the investors, investors, early investors in Tesla. Obviously he saw the, the magic in the product, and then eventually he became uh, the CEO and uh, techno king as he calls himself now. So this beautiful Tesla Model uh, S only has 52,152 miles. It's a relatively local one owner clean Carfax vehicle from the Oregon area. I actually purchased this from Tesla. Uh, at the auction. Um, Tesla, surprisingly, they do sell a good amount of pre-owned Teslas as well as off-brand trade-ins they take in. Uh, so Tesla's pretty picky about what they sell, uh, you know, for retail vehicles uh, as far as used cars go. When they have used cars that they sell, usually they're pretty much late model, uh, low mileage uh, Tesla products that are like kind of like certified pre-owned. So if there's any vehicles that usually have like scuffed bumpers, curved wheels, not kind of to, you know, certified pre-owned levels, uh, Tesla runs them at the auctions and uh, there's plenty of people willing to buy them, including me. Um, I have this Model S. I also have a Model 3 at the dealership that I recently purchased from Tesla as well. I buy a lot of vehicles from them. Uh, and I'm a Tesla fan by boy. I own stock in it. Um, I've been investing in Tesla in a long time. I've been in the car business my whole life. And when I first got the chance to get behind the wheel, of these products, I was impressed. I knew right away it was something special. I didn't have to read anything. And luckily, you know, for me, um, you know, being in the car business, I had a chance to actually experience the product where a lot of people, it's not as easy. So um, that's how we acquired this one. Uh, this one was a retired loaner vehicle. Um, the, the reason why I know is when I purchased it, it had a piece of paper from Tesla saying, you know, retired loaner vehicle. So basically this spent its whole life uh, being loaned out to uh, Tesla customers. Uh, so it's been in Tesla's care its whole life. Um, and the Model S is a great product. Uh, it's not, you know, as, uh, how should I say this? I guess maybe uh, if you're looking for a pre-owned Tesla, uh, an affordable Tesla, obviously they're still pretty expensive. If you're looking for a pre-owned Tesla that's under $40,000, uh, most of them are gonna be the Model S's. Uh, most of the Model 3's are still um, you know, over 40,000 unless they have high miles or they're really basic ones. Um, so you might ask yourself, what would be a better Tesla for me if you're thinking about getting one a pre-owned Model S or a pre-owned Model 3? I would say, you know, the biggest difference is the Model S is more luxurious, it's larger. So if you're looking for more of a luxury car experience, you want something like a big Mercedes or a big BMW, um, I would check out the Model S. Uh, if you're more concerned about, you know, having the latest in Tesla features like, you know, enhanced autopilot, uh, self-driving in the future, you know, the latest and greatest in tech features, then maybe check out the, the Model 3. Uh, this will never ever be a self-driving vehicle. Uh, you can't get enhanced autopilot in it. Um, it has, you know, regular cruise control. So it doesn't have all those, uh, you know, features that the newer Teslas have, but some people don't really care about that. For me, I don't really commute in the highway. I, you know, have a nice, uh, you know back road drive so for me i probably wouldn't use the enhanced autopilot that much in my daily commute and i'd be happy you know driving this um or if you know i had to commute to seattle and stop and go traffic okay then maybe i might want to check out you know the model 3 with enhanced autopilot or if you look at a newer model s they're a lot more money because this was probably close to about a hundred thousand uh, dollars when it was brand new so this is definitely a lot more of a premium product uh, than what the Model 3 is. The Model 3 is kind of designed to compete with like the BMW 3 Series, where the Model S is more along the lines of like a uh, BMW 5 Series or um, a Mercedes-Benz E-Class or even, you know, space-wise approaching the S-Class and 7 Series for refinement, refinement space and luxuriousness. Uh, beautiful leather interior. 
Um, big moon roof, and that's another thing I'd like to point out too, is uh, the Model 3, as far as I know, um, the moon roof uh, does not open, it's just a big roof panel, where the Model S you actually have uh, the ability to open the roof. And you have lots of uh, glass as well. It's a big panoramic roof, um, so it allows lots of natural light inside. And you can see uh, most of the uh, vehicle is controlled through this screen right here. This one also has an adjustable air suspension. I think that was like a $2,500 option when it was brand new. Um, I actually have a build sheet of all the options that I'll list uh, on the vehicle uh, on the vehicle description. Um, as far as I know, the Model 3, I don't think you can get an adjustable suspension on the Model 3. Um, so everything is handled through the screen, display, lots of, it's very intuitive to use, you know, sometimes it's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's just like using an iPhone. You just sit down, play with it, press all the buttons, kind of find your way through the menus, and it's pretty, it's pretty intuitive. Um, and then you, have, you still have the toy box. You don't have some of, of all the greatest, you know, features of some of the newer ones, but, you know, you can still do like the whoopee cushion. You can do the sketch pad. You can, you know, you got the romance mode and stuff like that. They'll put the fire on. Uh, puts heat through the climate control system. You know, it's kind of gimmicky stuff, but uh, it's also pretty cool as well. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Uh, so you can kind of get the idea about that. Then you have this huge screen. Uh, nice thing is this is grandfathered into premium connectivity. So premium connectivity basically gives you uh, Google Maps and uh, you know, you can stream music. Uh, so it's got an onboard, uh, you know, cell phone, you know, so, uh, cell phone transponder in there. That's where it gets the internet from. Usually Tesla charges $10 for premium connectivity, $10 a month. This is uh, grandfathered in, so it has unlimited premium connectivity. Uh, supercharging to pay per use. I've super supercharged it a couple times. It's very quick. Um, it was down to like 16 miles when I brought it to the supercharger yesterday, and it took about an hour and it had a full charge. And uh, supercharging is great. I'm very sold on that. It's very easy to do. Uh, nice uh, center screen here where the Model 3 just has, and the Model Y just has one screen. You have another screen here, so you have a little bit more uh, stuff of the uh, Model S. A little bit fancier trim. You kind of have like this synthetic suede cloth. Uh, the fit and finish, I think, is also uh, a little bit nicer on the Model S than on the Model 3. So let's continue the walk around. Really nice color combination on white and uh, gray. Looks beautiful. This also has the upgraded wheels. I think they're either 20 inch or uh, 21 inch wheels. Uh, they look beautiful and absolutely in great shape. It's an absolutely really beautiful design. Uh, absolutely stunning uh, looking automobile. And uh, it's also one of the most aerodynamic vehicles that you can buy too. It has one of the lowest drag coefficients of a production automobile, so that makes it really efficient. And of course, since it doesn't have a traditional engine, uh, where you normally have an engine, you have another trunk, also called the frunk, and you can see it's a pretty large, uh, pretty large uh, compartment, so it really is like having almost another trunk. Uh, we also had a door handle that broke. Uh, which is a pretty common issue. The driver's side door handle broke, it stopped working, which I guess is a pretty common issue on these things. Um, I made the mistake, I tried having our service and parts department fix it. Hey, we're a car dealership, we have a full service department. Well, they couldn't figure it out. And I figured, oh, Tesla, since it's out of warranty, they're gonna take forever. They're gonna charge me a fortune to fix it. Well, after my service department gave up on it, I made an appointment, Tesla is out here five, uh, about four days later. A uh, mobile repair person came, replaced the door handle, and it was $300. And they sent me an estimate for the repair before I even got here to fix it. So I was absolutely blown away by that. And my service manager was wondering, you know, how they can even make money fixing something like that for $300. Because I can tell you, if you went to Mercedes or, you know, BMW and you wanted to have anything fixed like that, it would be well over $1,000. But Tesla's a vertically integrated company. It's not franchised. They don't have middlemen, part suppliers. They do everything pretty much in-house. I think they manufacture... Uh, most of the components of these vehicles they manufacture in-house. A few odds and ends they outsource. This one also has the rear jump seats. Uh, you know, these are probably more for kids, but it makes it, uh, you can see two extra people and it folds flush all the way in there. So uh, that's a nice aspect. And look at all this cargo space. And with those seats folded down, uh, the jump seats in the stored position, you can fold down those rear seats for even more cargo space. So really a very efficient use of space. 
And this is very quick, you know, 400 horsepower on an electric car is almost like having five or 600 horsepower on a gas car, because there's no hesitation, uh, there's no downshifting, there's just one transmission, you have your instant, you have max power instantly as soon as you hit that throttle, the engine doesn't have to rev up. So zero to 60, new, these were about zero to 60 in four seconds. Uh, top speed's probably, you know, well over 130 miles per hour, but you know, who goes 130 on public roads? It's more of the acceleration, but it's a, just a wonderful point and shoot car. And since uh, all the batteries, basically uh, the batteries and electric motors and wheels, it's on a big skateboard and they put the body on top of it. So the, the floor is flat. So normally on a, a front engined, Rear wheel drive, uh, you know, competition like a 5 Series BMW, it's front engine, rear wheel drive, or front engine, all wheel drive. Uh, you have the transmissions mounted behind the engine, so all that space right there is taken up by a transmission tunnel. Then all the space in here, you have the drive shaft going to the rear wheels, but since this doesn't have any of all that stuff, it's just a completely flat floor, making it have a lot more uh, interior space, usable interior space than most cars in this size class. So one owner clean Carfax, who is a retired loaner from Tesla, is in their care uh, since new, relatively local. Uh, I just had the new door handle installed, so that's the other thing too, is that uh, talking to the repair person, uh, the older door handles were known as a common failure on these things, so this has a newer design door handle, which will be a lot less likely to fail. And since the driver's one is the door handle that's probably used the most, obviously that one failed first, so it'll probably be a while before the other ones uh, fail if they do at all. And obviously, if it does, you can see it's not too much money compared to the competition. Uh, one other weak area on these Tesla uh, Model S is the early ones is the screens. Um, sometimes uh, they have a tendency to, to go bad, but Tesla now has a, there's a, uh, a NHSTA, uh, I think, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, uh, recall. Uh, so basically Tesla will have to fix it for free if the screen does fail. But Tesla has one better. Uh, you know, the free repair under the recall is one thing, but for $1,500 it'll actually replace both these screens and uh, update the computer processor, which I've heard people say it's almost a life-changing difference. This works fine, works perfectly, I've had no issues, but $1,500 for replacing both these screens is not a lot of money. That's actually a pretty good deal. I'm surprised how cheap it is, so that's other, something else to keep in mind. Well, this is a long uh, video. Well, after all that being said, how about we take it for a little spin? Okay, here we go. We're taking this 2013 Model S P85 Plus out for a spin. And the one thing I really love about Tesla is just the instant acceleration. As soon as you hit the gas, there's no downshifting. You have instant throttle response, instant uh, acceleration. So that's one of the really impressive points about this. Uh, you know, the difference between an electric vehicle and a gas-powered car. And uh, just the amount of usable power too because uh, electric cars uh, the power is more accessible where a gasoline engine might need to rev to like five or six or seven thousand rpms to make its peak output you know uh, electric motors they pretty much have instant torque as soon as you step on the gas so max maximum torque which is really the important part for acceleration you pretty much get that instantly uh, as soon as you start turning that electric motor on so that's why you know, electric cars offer such amazing performance. That's why you see, you know, Tesla, uh, you know, P100Ds with ludicrous mode, you know, out dragging, you know, Ferraris and Lamborghinis and stuff like that. I see the writing on the wall. I think it's just a matter of time before all vehicles become electric just because of the efficiency. Unless they go wrong, when you have a, a regular gas engine car, you have about 2,000 moving parts. Where you go to an electric car, you have 20 moving parts, so there's a lot less to go wrong. And then, you know, servicing, oh, you know, oh, you need to do an EFI service, you know, that's $280. Oh, uh, you need to do an induction service, that's $250. Oh, you need new spark plugs. Um, oh, the timing belts are ready to replace at 90,000 miles, that's gonna be $1,000 for new ti timing belts. You're not gonna have any of that stuff on electric cars. And uh, brakes last forever too on electric cars too because you have regenerative braking so you don't really use the brakes that often. Uh, it runs the electric motor in reverse to slow the vehicle down and that charges the batteries back. So uh, so I think in the future most, uh, most uh, car companies are just going to sell like updates. Like you know you want to update the uh, enhanced autopilot or the full self-driving. 
that's you know how car companies are going to make their money. Whoa, got a little bit of squeaky there. And as soon as I step on the gas, this car just takes right out. It is rear wheel drive, so it will get a little bit squiggly. Uh, you know, unlike the dual motor one. But uh, there's some pros and cons to you know rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. Uh, their, their rear wheel drive, the single motor Teslas do have a little bit more efficiency than the all wheel drive ones. You give up uh, some range when you get all wheel drive. But really, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, I mean, we get maybe, I think there's one day where I couldn't drive to work this year where we had snow. Uh, but other than that, you know, we'll just, you know, wet slippery roads, you're going to do just fine with rear wheel drive. Obviously, all wheel drive can improve your wet weather performance, and if you do go over those mountain passes, you drive in the snow a lot, then yes, you're probably going to want to get all wheel drive. But aside from that, like I said, rear wheel drive is great around here. Where general braking is nice, the vehicle is slowing down. I'm not even, I'm not even uh, hitting the brakes right now. It's almost slowing down to a complete stop pretty quickly just uh, from the uh, regenerative braking for me just taking my foot off the throttle. So that's the other cool thing about Teslas um, and some other electric cars too is you can pretty much almost one pedal drive them. Uh, for the most part, you'll probably, if you have the regenerative braking set a little bit more aggressively, uh, you know, you won't use the brake pedal that much. And then, you know, the batteries do weigh a good amount, but since the batteries do weigh a lot and they're so low, it sets a low center of gravity point in this vehicle, that's why these Teslas are such remarkably handling vehicles, because such a low center of gravity. The majority of the weight of the vehicle is maybe like about a foot off the ground. Um, so it really, uh, even though it's a big car, you'll really love the way this handles. It just feels glued to the road, hardly any body roll at all. Lots and lots of fun to drive. And also quiet factor. Obviously no engine running, especially in stop and go traffic. It's a very, very quiet vehicle. So that concludes our little drive in the Model S. Uh, hopefully you found this video informative, rather you're just looking for information about the Model S in general, or maybe you're specifically thinking about purchasing this one. Uh, I, sorry, I do have a tendency to ramble on. Uh, but a very good vehicle. Sometimes if I'm doing a video for like a 2017 Toyota Corolla base, I, I have a hard time filling up a, a four minute video of stuff to talk about. Just there's not that much to talk about. They're good cars, but or you know, a model S like this, I could probably talk for hours about it. I'm excited about it and uh, it's a great product. And that's the thing, I'm around cars all the time. I mean, uh, I'm around nice, beautiful cars. I'm in the luxury part of the business. I've been in the luxury end of the car business for you know like 18 years. So I'm spoiled driving nice, beautiful late model luxury and sports cars all the time. Um, but electric cars are really starting to get me excited. Uh, I kind of feel almost like a little kid again talking about you know this car and some of the new other electric car brands that are coming out because I think it's a big change in the car world and it's exciting stuff. They're going to be more efficient. They're going to do a lot more cool stuff, and they're going to be safer. Um, and this is also a very safe vehicle. Uh, going back to um, the batteries in the floor, it has a very, very low uh, low rollover risk. They're actually almost <laughs> impossible to roll over. If you look up uh, a video of um, doing crash testing on the Model S and X, they have a, a special machine that pushes these cars sideways into a sand pit to try to get them to roll over. And the Model X, which is based on the same platform as the Model S, but it's a SUV body, which is a little bit more top heavy. They couldn't even get that thing to roll over. It almost got all the way over the rollover, but then it would go back over. So the, the batteries in this thing, it's almost like a big keel on a sailboat or, you know, one of those, uh, one of those, uh, you know, remember those clowns that you'd inflate and you'd punch, punch them and they'd, they'd come back up no matter how hard you tried to punch them down well with uh, the Teslas and the battery pack so low on the floor it's kind, of, it's kind of the same deal with this vehicle thanks so much for taking the time today to watch this video hopefully this was informative uh, and hopefully we'll see you soon